Son, you let us be backed into that corner, eh? Well, what's it do? Good out of it, coach. Oh, yeah, with well, your chin, I suppose, eh? Now, listen. Either you cover up, right? Or you smother, right? Right. Come on, me dog. Oh, that's old, is Well, of course it is. And then I will tell you, won't he? And then you'll have to stop, won't you? And then you'll be off the ropes, won't you? Or else you move. You understand that you intelligently move. You don't just stand there waiting to be hit. Yes, coach. Right, coach. Anything you say, coach. Ah, well, don't be so cheeky. Right. Get on. Go on, then. Ow. Ah, I'll hold it easy. Uh, you're right, coach. You fancy your Henry Cooper, do you? Stopped him, didn't I, coach? Stopped him. You only winded him. Look, if you're going to throw punches like that, sir, you've got to get the whole weight of your body, the whole momentum of your torso behind you. Right. <laughs> And I had you there some will not. Yeah, coach. Yeah, coach. That's right. Well, okay, you're coming on. Don't get changed. Sure, coach. You're an inquiry agent. Yeah, yes, right. Yes. Yes, I do. All right, then. Come in. Sit down. Would you charge? Six guineas a day, plus some travel expenses, other expenses. Depends upon the job, really. If it's something that doesn't monopolise the whole day, you get it cheaper. I want my husband found. Ah, I see. All right, then. Now, you tell me all about it, and I'll tell you everything I can help. He left me 18 months ago. He just walked out. That's the last you saw of him? It is. What have you done about it, Mrs... Um... Murphy. Spell it, will you? M-U-R-F-I-E-L-D. I haven't done anything about it. Oh, where's that? Well, uh, what could I do about it? I mean, he's gone. Well, if you're so philosophical about it, why come to me now? Ah, oh, because he's been seen here in Windsor. Then you want him back? I want him found. I've had the rent to pay and a trout to bring up. Where'd you come from, Mrs. Burfield? Doncaster. And he's never sent you anything? That's right, nothing. So all you're really interested in is the maintenance, That's huh? it. Yeah, well, you don't need me, any solicitor or citizen's advice bureau. Do what you want better than I can. How do you mean? Well, apply for a summons against him for desertion. They'll tell you how. Oh, you haven't got the money for lawyers. No, you don't have to have. You get a legal aid certificate. You go to the citizen's advice bureau and they'll help you. Don't you want the job? There's not a question of that, Mrs. Murphy. They can do it better. That's what they're there for. But if he can't be traced, how can I get my money? Well, the courts will trace him for you through his employment. They'll make an attachment order against his earnings. You can collect it through the clerk of the court. It's your best bet. Will they tell me where he is? Oh, no, no. It's not their job. But I thought you were only interested in the money. I want to see him face to face. Now, what are you going to do then? Tell him what I think of him. So when exactly was he seen? Two or three times in the last month. Who by? A friend of mine. I'm staying with her. Right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make one or two inquiries as I go around. If I get anywhere, I'll come back to you. In the meantime, you go back to the town hall, all right? I want him found. Yeah, yeah, I know, but that's all I can do. I'll just give me a brief description, then, will you? What's his first name? Stanley. How old is he? 45, medium build. 
colouring? Uh, brown. Brownish hair. Eyes. Blue. What's his job? He's the salesman. Oh, what sort? The uh, shop, door to door, what? Well, he, he's done all sorts. Uh, he's just a traveller. Uh, have you got a photograph? Not on me. I might have one back at home with my things. Yeah, see if you can find it, will you? Where can I get in touch with you? Well, at the moment I'm staying with this friend of mine. I'm not quite sure how long I've been. Just give me the phone number. Yes, she's not on the phone. <clears throat> I'll, um... I'll come in tomorrow with a number where you can reach me. Yeah, you do that. Good night, Mrs. Murphy. Are you coming tomorrow? Yeah. That's 15, if you please, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, George. Off? Oh. If you please. Busy then? Oh, sir, sir. Can I have a look at your phone book? Yes, sir. So. Classified in the back, if you look for criminals. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Murdoch, Murphy, Murphy. Can I help? No, Murfield. You don't know anyone called Murfield, do you? Sorry, no. Medium height, brown hair, blue eyes, about 45. Yeah, no, 500 of them. Mm. You and me both. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Sweeney. Ah, hello, George. How do? Hello there. And how's the youth of today, then? Oh, uh, much the same as the youth of yesterday. Uh, just like us, then. Uh, more or less. You gonna help them, then? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. You plan to be over here long, Mr. Gorman? Oh, no, um, just a short uh, business trip. This is our first time. We only have five days here in England, and then we're going on to Germany. Uh, but we'll be back. Oh, we certainly will. <laughs> uh, let me freshen your glasses. Oh, thank you. No, we have to dine early. <laughs> Chrissy here wants to go down river someplace. Uh, King John signed a Magna Carta there. Isn't that it, honey? Yes, uh, runny right. mead or something. Oh, let me introduce Mrs. Gorman, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ed Husak. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Gorman. How do you do, Mrs. Gorman? <clears throat> um... Say, uh, why not have that drink? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess she's right. We do have to go, but I don't know why. Just a plain, ordinary old field. <laughs> see, we have plenty of fields back home, but Chrissy wants to see this field, so we got to go. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse us, there's so much to do in five days. Goodbye now. Bye. 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 You want a drink? Oh, I had to get on. He said he'd make some inquiries. He wants a photograph. Okay. Give it to him. But don't you think it's funny that this is all I've got? So what if he does? He's getting paid. It's better than nothing. Anyone for you, George? Telephone voice from the past. Sorry, I'm not with you. Eight across, telephone voice from the past, four letters, NGF. Four letters, oh. <laughs> What's the first letter? Um, that's F2. Ah, it's easy. I'm well, glad you think so. Fomf. What? This is Fomf speaking. Oh, Edmar! Ah, it's that it. man again. <laughs> oh, hey, you've got a good memory. Wow. Yes. Well, well, it takes you back, back a minute. Yeah, oh. a bit too far. Don't forget the diver suit. You get lost on memory lane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a nice chap. Frank Marker. Oh, he often comes in. Haven't you seen him before? <coughs> He's a nice chap.
Doesn't like the drill mm. dried up, eh? Right. That's about the size of it. Right, George. Cheers. Windsor, I don't know the address. The subscriber's name is Murfield, M U R F I E L D. He's not in the book, but he might only recently have moved. Hello? Sorry, Connor. Nobody under that name. And what about X Directory? No, nothing. Sorry. All right, thank you. about my love. Oh, you, me. <laughs> but they seem such sad thoughts. No, 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 they're not. <laughs> you look as though they are. No, they're happy ones, really. I was trying to remember this, us, to keep my mind for all this. <laughs> but that is sad. <laughs> How can that be sad? As if you don't think it will go on. Oh, I see. No, 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 it isn't that. You're a lovely man, did you know that? <laughs> I'm glad you think so. You don't have to remember. You'll always have me. Will I? Of course you will. I'm yours. What if some strapping young fella comes along and takes you away from me? If only you knew. Doncaster, Stanley Murfield, M U R Field. Don't know the address, sorry. That is the 71 directory, is it? That's right. Uh, what about the previous house directory? Well, how's that going to help you if he's not on the phone now? I mean, if he's moved and the new people have kept the number, they might be able to tell me where he's gone. Okay. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. 
Stanley Murphy, yeah. Doncaster 60499. Uh, what's the uh, code number? Uh, Thank you. Darling? Yeah? Tell me about your wife. What well, do you want to know about her? I want to know about you, before I met you. Uh -huh. uh, that was another life. <laughs> Don't be sad again. You and your being sad. Life isn't all happiness. Well, why shouldn't it be? Well, I don't know, but it isn't. You've, you've got to take knocks for this money. <laughs> and you're such a wise old owl, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, old. Don't say that. You're always saying how old you are. Sorry. What do you think she would do if she knew about us? We have to talk about her. You don't want to. I just don't think it would be very uh, helpful, that's all. Will you always stay married to her? Well, I know. It's not fair. But perhaps one day I'll find somewhere for her and... Then we'll see, huh? Yes. One day. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll walk you home. There's a growing problem. It's particularly a woman's problem because women last the pace better than men. The average woman can expect to live till she's 75, seven years more than the average man. But what does life hold once oh, the house is over and a partner has gone? You, uh, you got yourself something then? Mm. You're late, aren't you? Uh, yeah, the coaching session went on a bit. Mm. Is that the evening paper? Yeah. Millions of people in this country grow old in... Turn that thing off if you want to. Many of them have left the friends and surroundings they've known all their lives. Have you been? Not too bad. Yeah. This was last week. This paper's a week old. So it is. What's well, Friday? Good God. What is it? Gorman. He's dead. Yes, could you check it? Only it was engaged last night and I tried several times this morning. I'll hold on. Have you brought me a photograph? I could only find this. You know him? Yeah, well, it's a very familiar sort of face, really, isn't it? A bit difficult to tell, really, miss. Just give me the name of the newspaper and when about it was published, I'll see if I can get a glossy from their picture library. I can't. Why not? Well, I don't know when it was published. Well, what was the occasion? Why was it taken? Oh, well, I don't know. He, he just left it among his things when he left. Not being very much help, are you, Mrs. Murphy? That's all I've got. I see. All right. Are you going to give me a phone number? You, um... You can leave a message here for me to ring you back. Mm. It's a private number, is it? No, it's a hotel. The receptionist there is a friend of mine. 
But Mrs. Murphy, forgive me being personal, but you said yesterday that you had the rent to find and a child to bring up. That's right. Well, this could very well cost you, what, 25 to 50 quid? Isn't that rather an expensive way of telling him what you think about him? You want something on account? Is that what you're hinting? No, that isn't what I'm hinting, as you call it. Yeah, hold on, will you? I'll be in touch, Mrs. Murphy. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Okay. We asked about the newspaper. Why? He wanted to know when it was published so he could get the original photograph. Didn't tell him, of course. He suspects something. What's the matter what he thinks as long as he does a job? How long will you give him? As long as it takes. Seems a nice place. Where do you want to go, sis? I don't mind. Oh, come on! Want to take in a movie? Anything you say. Okay, you're the boss. Let's go. Chop. Hello, sir. Are you quick off a mark this morning? Ah, we don't hang about in our business, sir. Unusual? Take it, please. <laughs> what about that crossword, eh? Funk. This is funk. What about it? <laughs> well, it beats me how they pick them up. Uh, what did you say that fellow's name was? Stan Smeaton. He's got a sport shop in Watergate Street. Oh, oh I would have put him down as a salesman of some kind. No, no, no. Cheers. Good health. No, he's very keen on sport. Uh, it's some of the local lads around the church hall. Oh, yeah. Weekends and evenings. Right. Somebody was telling me he carries quite a useful punch himself. Is he? Is he? Has he been in the district long? Here, let me buy that. Well, that's very kind of you. First of the day. I wish they all tasted like that. Indeed. <coughs> oh dear. No, I think it's about two years. Comes from somewhere up north, isn't he? Well, I don't think he was born within the sound of Bow Bells. <laughs> He's got a missus, is he? I don't know about that. He's never brought anyone in here. Yeah, where's he lived, you know? This isn't a professional inquiry, is it, Mr. Martha? Because I don't mind helping out normally, but when it comes to talking about one of my customers, well, you know what I mean, don't you? Mm, yeah, I'm sorry. No, it was just idle curiosity. You don't mind me saying that, do you? No, no, you're quite right, George. Well, this won't earn the rent, will it? Do you know what she said to me when I got down there? Well, she said she'd been paid for last, so why not? <laughs> and there was this young girl looking at me. A real little corker she was. So what did... Um... Oh, just a young, innocent couple then, wasn't I? I sat up all night sweating in my uniform till the inspector came down in the morning. 
Ah, the notorious Mr. Martha. Oh. Don't look at me like that, George. This is thirsty work. Got a job for me then, Frank, when I'm all washed up in the oh, falls? That'll be the day, won't it? Thanks. Yeah, you're right. Well. Cheers. Sorry. Is Mr. Smeaton in? You've just missed him. He's gone to his shop. Oh, dear. What a pity. But, uh, Pratt, I wonder, would you mind answering a few questions? What questions? Well, we're doing a survey on aircraft noise. It's particularly bad in the Windsor area. I'm sure you'll agree. Oh, it's disgraceful. Oh, that is the general response we find. Now, um, you are Mrs. Smeaton, are you? Yes. How long have you lived in the area, Mrs. Smeaton? 18 months. Nearly two years. I see. And where were you living before that? How is that relevant? It helps us to evaluate people's responses as to whether or not they're used to a lot of noise. We moved down from the north. Aye, whereabouts in the north Have you an authority then? card or anything? <laughs> Must have left it at the office. I don't wish to answer any further questions. Oh, look, madam, all we want to know is... Hello, is that Doncaster 60499? Aye, uh, it is. Ah, oh, good. Can I speak to Mr Murfield, please? Murfield? Yes, yeah, I have got the right number, haven't I? Both the Murfields left here over two years ago. What? Both of them? Aye, they moved down south after Sergeant Murphy retired. Uh, Sergeant Murphy? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Do you happen to have his present address? No, I'm sorry. Oh, all right, thank you very much. <laughs> so I said to Ed, the day we landed, now we can get a cup of real good English tea. Well, we got it. Just the same stuff we get at home. <laughs> no, uh, you know why, don't you? Here, I I'll show you. Excuse me. Now, there. Is that or is that not a typical North American tea bag? Oh, put that thing back. They won't take on in Ireland. They put so many in, there'll be no room for the water. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> what part of Ireland do you come from, <clears throat> Mr. Gorman? County Clare. <laughs> do you know Ireland? No, I've never been there. <laughs> Chrissy always feels she has to ask a man where he come from, uh, no matter if she's never set foot in the country. <laughs> How about you, Mrs. Gorman? Are you also Irish, like your husband? It's not my husband. Oh, um, I, I beg your pardon. Um, See, I, I just assume that, that, that uh, um... Ed, excuse me. I, I'm sorry. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Gorman. Maureen's my sister-in-law and my brother died last week. Oh, God, that's awful. Oh, uh, did your brother live in England? You're doing it again, honey. What? Yeah, they uh, lived in the north. Were you over here at the time? Look, Chrissy. Yeah, I knew it was going to happen, so I managed to be here a few days before. Look, you have to forgive us, Mr. Gorman. We really thought you was just here on a business trip. We had no idea. No, no, we're very grateful for your sympathy. It's just that uh, Maureen has been under a lot of strain. Well, of course. Uh, of course she has. And will she go back to the States with you? No, no, uh, Maureen's home is in this country, uh, I do, in fact, have a little business to take care of oh, yeah. before I go back. Mm -hmm. Can I speak to Inspector Furbank, please? Inspector Furbank is out. Will you speak to somebody else? Uh, no, no. Will you ask him if he'd bring Frank Marker? Yes, all right. Thank you. Oh, look. 
Yeah, uh, I brought you some flowers. Oh yeah, had a good day at the shop. Turned over nearly 50 quid. I like him in to, to buy a creel. Put away with two new rods. Instead of spending one pound, he spent nearly 20. Ah, there we are. How's about that? They're very nice. Yeah, I thought you'd like them. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Oh, well, that's all right then. Tea's waiting. <laughs> and I'm waiting for it. Yeah. Look at the rope. There was somebody here today asking questions. Oh, what questions? A man. He said it was a survey about aircraft noise. Well, what, what did he want to know? What, what kind of things? Well, how long we'd lived here, where we'd moved from. What did you tell him? I didn't tell him where we lived. Why not? I didn't believe him. Describe him. He was tall, thin, late forties. He wore a light-coloured raincoat. Did he have any identification? Oh, I asked him. He said he'd left it behind. Oh, well. A week ago, I might have worried. <laughs> it's a different matter now. Did, uh... Anything else happen? What could happen? I haven't been out for a week. I... I thought it would be nice to go down to the river for an hour. Hmm. No, I can't this evening. Why not? I've got a coaching session, a well, couple of the lads. third night this week. Well, I'm sorry, but it's going up to the area finals. Look at me, Stanley. Yeah. Will you swear to me something? Oh, for God's sake, don't start all that again. Well, look, I've told you before, I only go down there for the sake of those lads. Well, I don't believe it, that's all. Well, you're calling me a liar. You're messing about with some girl, I can tell from how you are. Loaf, just, just bloody well stop nagging me. You're like some dirty mongrel sniffing somewhere. You're taken in by some dirty little bitch. Well, since it gives you so much pleasure, you can just damn well think what you please. Tea there, am I? I've had mine. Well, that's nice. The office told me you want to see me. I come running, no tea. Kettle has just boiled. But your customers don't get this treatment. But they get the actual leaf. Milk? Yeah, please. Oh. Yeah. I'm being used, I reckon. Huh. Join the club. No, no, no. Somebody comes in here, offers me a job. I start to do it. It's not too difficult, really. It's a matter of luck. And all of a sudden, I get the impression that the information I'm being asked to provide isn't for the reasons I was given when I took the job on. There's a meaning in that. Oh, well, obviously, if my client had given me the real reason, I wouldn't have taken the job on. Mm -hmm. But plainly, you think it could lead to an offence of some kind. That's why I'm here, isn't it? No, no, not quite. I would shock my client, even if I did think he was up to something. It's not my job, is mm. it? And why involve me? But you trust me? Oh, come on now. What are you selling? No, I'm not selling anything, but I do need a bit of help. Now, if I get it and the deal looks at all dodgy, I'll tell you as much as I think I properly can. And if it doesn't look dodgy? Well, then you get nothing except my thanks. <laughs> well, if it's not dodgy, it's none of your business, is it? A deal, eh? And what if it should explode in my face? Prevention of Corruption Act, 1906 and all that. Will you pay my pension? Uh, not that kind of a deal. For a moment, there, you had me worried. man called Stanley Murfield lives in Doncaster 18 months or two years and then comes down here. You want me to break the Official Secrets Act and tell you what we know about him? Oh, no, I wouldn't ask you to do that, Percy. I would have hoped you'd have known that. 
Well, what do you want, then? When he left Doncaster, he also left the police. He was a sergeant. But somebody, my client, or somebody my client is standing in for, wants to find him badly. Now, all I want you to do is to check on Murfield. If you don't turn up anything that might be bad news for him, if I tell my client where he is, OK, you don't have to tell me a thing. If, on the other hand, it begins to look, shall we say, interesting, then I think you and I ought to have another little talk in everybody's interest, don't you think? You're a very cool customer. You know that. I do my job. I like to think I do it reasonably professionally. I want to go on doing it. Now, how long do you reckon I'd last if it got about that I put the dogs on ex-copper? I'll keep you posted. Well, I think she's blackmailing you. Oh, don't say that. Well, she is. She knows you won't leave her. I can't. Not just like that. You're too soft. She's entitled to my consideration. And I'm not, is that it? Well, it was all right at first. Why do we have to quarrel about it now? It would be all right for you if we went on like this forever, I suppose. As long as I let you have what you want, you can go home happy. That's not fair. Isn't it? Is it any less fair for you than for me? Well, it's so, so squalid and mean always like this. Are you suggesting we shouldn't meet? I'm saying that other girls can go round with their fellows. Well, that's what I'm saying. We've got to go now. Graham wants me to help with something. Are we meeting tomorrow? Yes. I'll come. Fun, Fee. Eh? Fun. Telephone voice in the past. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Did you finish it, the cross one? Uh, no, 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 I, I forgot about it. That chap was in here yesterday. Huh? Frank Marker, it was his paper. Oh, yeah. Now, you said you hadn't seen him before. Well, that's right, why? Well, he was in here today, he was asking about you. <laughs> Give me a minute. Take it easy, take it easy. I want to know who you were working for. You've got the wrong department, haven't you? You've been asking questions at my local. I've been round at my house. I want to know why. But you can't barge in here and start throwing your weight about. I'll have you for assault. I asked you two questions. I'll settle for one. Why are you interested in me? I'm telling you nothing. I wonder what gives people like you the right to exist. Now get out, go on, get out of my office. All right. But I'll leave you with just one thought. You know why the Irish are better poachers than the English? Because we wait for the beater to flush the game, then we're going back to pheasant ourselves.
take the car, go back to the hotel, and check out this sisters. I'll see you in the high street in half an hour. It's like that, is it? Yeah, it's like that, friend. Sorry. All right, then. First thing in the morning, I get it. Oh, but I can't just going. Oh, God. Stanley Murfield. And this woman claimed to be his wife. That's right. Irish accent. That's what it sounded like. That'll be Maureen Gorman, wife of Patrick. You've got a nasty one here, Frank. Yeah, don't I know it? A very nasty one. Patrick Gorman was done for seven years, throwing acid in a woman's face. Oh, very nice. She was the wife of a northern gambling club owner whose hubby wasn't towing the line. A CID sergeant name of Murfield prepared the case against Gorman and two others. That was two years ago. Ten days ago, Patrick Gorman died of cancer in prison. That sounds like the simple bit. As you say. Gorman claimed that Murfield had taken money to suppress the evidence that got him convicted. There was an inquiry. Murfield was cleared. Yeah, it's not a particularly uncommon allegation, is sure. it? Villains either love or hate the policeman who gets them done. But why would he want to change his name? You tell me. Well, there must have been something in it, wasn't there? It was his last case. While he was investigating it, his wife was seriously injured in a motor accident and his 12-year-old boy was killed. When the trial was over, Murfield took his retirement and disappeared from Doncaster, 18 months ago. It was an accident, was it? Oh, yeah, sure. Lorry driver had a heart attack. Now, this is why it won't wait. Patrick Gorman has an older brother, Terence. He's now an American citizen. He's also a mobster, a killer. He went to visit his brother in prison just before Patrick died. What's the matter? Yeah, nothing. A bit of stomachache, that's all. Who are you ringing? Hang about. Uh, hello, my name's Marker. I spoke to you a short while ago. Yes, Mrs. Marker, you're asking for Mrs. Murphy. Yeah, but you haven't got a Mrs. Murphy. You're staying at the hotel, have you? Have. Then why didn't you say so in the first place? Have you got somebody there by the name of Gorman? Hold on. Mr. and Mrs. Gorman checked out a few minutes ago. It took us a little trouble to find you, Mr. Murphy, but we finally did, so that's all that matters. Sit down. Did you think no one would ever find you? Changing your name, moving into this nice place? Well, now you have found me, what do you want? No, don't rush me, Mr. Murfield. My diligence has at least earned me the right to speak with you. <coughs> Wouldn't you say that? I know about you, Golden. Oh, yeah? Then you want me to tell him why I'm here? I saw Patrick last week. You remember Patrick? He remembers you. The poor fellow died on the Tuesday. He'd been dying for three months, and you were on his mind the whole time. Somebody had to catch him. It was my job. And you did it, Sergeant. No. 
You don't smoke? No. Is it for your health? Is it for your health, I said? Well, Jesus, there's the irony of it. You know what I'm gonna do to you, don't you? Oh, come on. Go away. Leave us alone. Please. Go away. Was it? Go away, you said. And what about the money my younger brother Patrick paid you? Wasn't it 5000 for a favor? And what become of a favor? Things... Things happen. I don't, I don't know. There was an accident. My son was... I don't suppose it matters, really. It's all the same to you, to people like you. I'll tell you what matters. It's my younger brother Patrick lying there like a bundle of sticks. And all he could think of at the end was you, not me, nor his wife, but you, Sergeant. Sure. He would have died. He could have died home in Ireland or with me in New York. But no, he died where you put him in prison. You took his money and you welched on him and that's why his dying thoughts were of you, buddy. This has nothing to do with her. It didn't. Now it has. I don't care what you do. I'm sorry, but you can see the problem you're being here. To end my life now would be a kind of happiness for me. Oh, for God's sake, Margaret. I never want to see your face or hear your voice again. I should just like to die now and you to know how I felt about you at the last. What does she say, these things? I've his conscience, and he hates me for it. You're a neurotic, twisted woman, and God knows why I bother about you. I hate you more than I would have believed humanly possible. Oh, why, sure. <laughs> well, God help the both of you, because I won't. <laughs> Watch him. Let him go, Frank. Well, now, wouldn't you say that was the luck of the Irish? Thank you, George. Oh, my treat. I owe you a favour. Yes, breaking a client's confidence. But your client never paid you, didn't she? Shut up. I'm trying to forget all about that. Cheers. Cheers. Will treat you all right, Mr. Marker? Yes. Not going to help from you, though. What a very nasty business. I wonder why he didn't... Well, he didn't. That's all that matters. Mm. Wife in the wheelchair, maybe. Who can tell? Must be nice to be that young, eh? Yeah? Mm. Mm. Wish I was. What, love's young dream? <laughs> Thank you.